apocalyptic, apo, apocalypse, apocalypt, apocalypse. Hi friends and welcome back. Today I have got not one, but two Once Upon a Book Club boxes. At first I thought I was going to do a double unboxing because I'm behind with their boxes and with reading their books. But then I decided to do a double unboxing because I feel like, and these were two boxes in a row, that these actually were the worst and the best box for them this year. And I'm not gonna tell you which one is which beforehand. I will just review the book and the items that came with it. And afterwards, I will obviously tell you guys which in my opinion was their worst and their best box this year. And if you like this kind of content, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss another video of me again. Let's get unboxing. Let's start with this one. The theme is, you may say, I'm a dreamer. And when we open this one up, the book club kit is on top and beneath that, the items and the book. If you've been following me on TikTok, you will already have seen this box and also the discount code that I have for you guys. And that is Leanna Books 10 to get 10% off your first purchase. So this can either be a subscription or just an item or a special edition box, it doesn't matter, it will get you 10% off. As always, I'm going to first talk about the book because I've already read it and then we'll go through the items. But before I do, a big thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing and I really appreciate you. And if you feel like it's something for you, then definitely go check it out over at patreon.com, type in my name, Leanda Brooks, or click on the link in my description. The book I wanna talk about is Reset by Serena Dalong. Probably mispronounced that, but... <laughs> First of all, I love this cover. I absolutely love this cover. It's giving me sci-fi vibes, it's giving me city vibes, but to my surprise, this is actually categorized as a romance and a sci-fi, but mainly as a romance novel. This book is all about one question. Can you love someone you don't remember? I feel like this is one of those books that I can never explain as good as the summary at the back of the book. So I'm just gonna read that to you guys. After the last war destroyed most of the world, survivors form a new society in four self-sustaining cities in the Moave Desert. In the utopia of the four cities, inspired by the lyrics of Imagine and Buddhist philosophy, everything is carefully planned and controlled. The seasons, the weather, and the residents. To prevent mankind from destroying each other again, its citizens undergo a memory wipe every four years in a process called tabula rasa. With each new cycle, they begin again with new names, jobs, homes, and lives. No memories, no attachments, no wars. When I read this, I thought that concept sounded so cool for a book, not for the real world, but for a book. <laughs> Our main character is called Aris, and she is a scientist who shuns love. She doesn't like emotional attachments and relationships are pointless. She is haunted by this recurring dream that becomes more frequent and more vivid. And in this world, it is said that the dreams that you are having are from a past life. Then Aris meets Benja, who is this free-spirited writer, and he is having dreams as well and believes they are from his past lover. There's a secret organization called the Dreamers and they have a way to recover your memory. So Benja gets obsessed with finding this secret organization. Eris somehow gets involved and meets the leader of the Dreamers called Metis. Everything she believes falls to pieces and they start this bittersweet romance. But there is little time left before the next tabula rasa when their memories will get destroyed this was a really thought-provoking almost philosophical book i really liked the world that it all took place in and the concept of it there's also this guy called the creator there's this mystery to it and you will get answers towards the end of the book but it's also still a little bit vague and turns out the book wasn't really about what it was about. I'm not sure if I'm making sense, but if you've read the book, you'll 
probably get what I mean. That was kind of a twist towards the end, which I really liked. It made me feel all kinds of emotions. I also cried and that is rare when I'm reading books. So even though you are not necessarily a romance reader like me, I would definitely recommend reading this book because it will make you think or feel a certain kind of way. And I think it's brilliant when stories do that. And then when I get to the end of this book, I read a little bit about the author. And it turns out that Serena has a degree in psychology. She grew up on fairy tales, she learned parables through ghost stories, she loves mythologies and Japanese manga, and she loves scientific thinking. Somehow I felt a connection to this author and I instantly followed her on Goodreads because this was her first novel and I'm really excited to see what her second novel will be about. Now let's take a look at the gifts. The first post-it can be found on page 19. In this scene, there's this angry man on the street. He's shouting and one of the officials is pulling up. Uh, kind of like the police. The fedora man approaches the angry man slowly and deliberately. The angry man steps back until his body hits a column off the building. For a moment, Aris wonders if he's going to hurt the newcomer. In a quick move, the man in the fedora grabs his hand as if wanting to shake it. Instead, he puts a silver bangle on the angry man's wrists. Instantly, the angry man becomes as silent and still as the column behind him. His rage dissipates into the air like smoke. The corresponding gift comes in this little white bag and inside is the silver bangle. I really love this. It's a silver bangle. I love the design. It's very futuristic. So I can totally imagine them wearing these bangles in the book. It opens at the front and it's one size fits all. The only thing I'm a little bit sad about is that it was silver, but somehow it got stained. Maybe it was the temperature because it was in a box this entire time that I was moving, but still that's a little bit sad. It's got these brown stains now. I do hope I can still clean it because I do like this. I really like this. Moving on, this is a scene between Aris and Benja and they are just hanging out. What's this? Aris weighs it with her hand. Something I found at the gift market. I thought of you when I saw it. Aris unwraps it and reveals a small desert scape painting. Her face breaks into a wide smile. You told me you like hiking in the nature preserve, he says. I love it. You're officially forgiven for being late. The corresponding pink gift and inside is the painting. It's really simple. It looks like someone has just painted this themselves and I love it. I really love it. I like this. It's very minimalistic and it really gives off this vibe that someone found this at a market. The next post-it can be found on page 73 and in this scene Benja has found this blue piece of paper and I think it contains a hidden message from the dreamers, the secret organization. She takes the piece of blue paper and holds it over the flame. Benja sucks in a breath. His eyes stare unblinking. A corner of the paper curls and a burning smell rises. She raises the paper. She needs to find that perfect place between answer and ash. Brown lines slowly appear one by one until words form. Spring flower. Her breathing stumbles. She almost drops the paper. Benja reaches over with trembling hand and takes it from between her fingers. What does it mean? He says staring at the words as if they hold the meaning of life. The corresponding gift is this beautiful blue box and inside, and you can already smell it, is a candle. I don't know about you guys, but I love getting candles in subscription boxes. And not only that, there is a blue piece of paper that has the shape of an origami bird. And at the inside of the box, it says, open the origami crane and hover over a burning candle for the secret message. And then beneath it, it says, don't get too close and do it over the sink. <laughs> Like your mom just scribbled an extra note beneath it. Probably the exact same secret message, but who knows, maybe it's a different message. I'm excited to try it and respect for the person who folded all these origami cranes. Then for the final gift, we go more towards the end of the story. And this is a scene between Metis and Aris. So for people who haven't read the book, this passage will not make sense, but that's good because you don't want any spoilers. He opens the book and reads a passage. Suddenly, bright light shines up from the book. 
bathing the room white, like the inside of a hospital. She staggers backward. Her hip hits the corner of a bookshelf, tilting her off balance. Don't be afraid. The crown will show up soon. Aris walks to him. He wraps an arm around her shoulders. It's okay, he whispers in her ear. It's a hologram. An ancient woman materializes before them. Her conjured image appears as if filled by fog. She is a vision in white, skin as pale as the moon, hair the color of chalk. Her silvery gown blows behind her as if she is standing in a breeze. The corresponding gift is this light green box with origami cranes on it. And inside, and this is probably my favorite gift of this box, it is a reading book light. Oh my gosh, look at that. Have you ever seen something? like this. I just don't get how this is going to stay open because it kind of folds in on itself. So do you, oh, and then you have your light. It's so adorable, you guys. I can't get over this item. It has warm white, double color, three colors, five colors, seven colors. Definitely my favorite item of this box. And in this book, once upon a book club tried something new, they actually added a QR code and it would lead you to this piano song that you could play in the background while reading. I thought that was such a good idea. So I hope they will continue that for future boxes. Next to the gifts, we also got a quote card. We all have the freedom to author our own souls. And then of course the book club kit in which you can find a conversation with the author and at the back, a do-it-yourself origami crane. And the theme of the next box is Catherine's Dior's Friends Resistance Spy. That's a mouthful. This is the first look and inside we have the book. Beneath that, the book club kit and of course the gifts. The book is called Sisters of Resistance by Christine Wells. This book is about the Second World War and we follow two sisters, Yvette and Gabby, who are both part of the French resistance. It really starts at the beginning in 1944. And then there's another timeline in 1947 in which we see the sisters reuniting and they both have to take part in this trial that is somehow connected to their activities within the resistance in 1944. Catherine Dior is also part of the spy network and she is the sister of the famous designer Dior. So somehow this is woven throughout the story as well. There's a little bit of fashion, but it's mainly about the two sisters, their life during the war, their time in the resistance and the company that they keep. And each chapter starts with a little image of the Eiffel Tower. And what's interesting about the author, Christine Wells, is that she writes historical fiction featuring strong, fascinating women. You have to read quite a bit for this first gift because the first post-it can be found on page 114. And in this scene, we follow both the sisters, so Gabby and Yvette. Yvette stared at her intently. Then she lowered her gaze to the page. These are superb, Gabby. You always did hide your light. Take that one, Gabby blurted out. It's of you. It was the coral dress that Yvette had shown off so well, her waist impossibly tiny, her bosom and neck rising, swan-like, from the low-cut bodice. The corresponding gift, and I thought the packaging of this one was very on theme. It's an envelope that says top secrets, and inside is a sketch and this is presumably Yvette. I'm not really a fan of this item uh, because it feels like the wrong material. It is very obviously printed on there and it is mentioned in the book that it is a sketch. So I would have preferred for this to be on a blank piece of paper and then it would be a good item because it does look good. Next post-it is a scene between Gabby and Burger, this guy who works for this underground organization, you might say, is kind of a criminal. And Gabby is in need of certain pills for a friend. His gaze lifted to hers and the lighter flame danced in his dark eyes. The cigarette tip flared to life and Gabby drew smoke deep into her lungs, fighting the urge to cuff. Burger released her wrist. Are you here to waste my time, mademoiselle? Of course not, please. I. She fisted in a purse and brought out a small velvet bag. I have put that away. You seemed annoyed at her. I don't trade with the likes of you. Sit down. She did as he was told, sinking into a chair opposite him. What I need, said Burger, steepling his fingers together, is not some little trinket from your grandmother's jewel box, but information. The corresponding gift is wrapped in this beautiful wrapping paper, I might add. Inside is this pink looking 
bag. I, I don't know if I can call it a bag because it is made out of plastic, I want to say. Oh wait, it is a bag because inside you'll find this, uh, a golden chain that you can attach to these thingies right here and then you can actually wear this as a bag. Was this fashion in 1944? If it was, then this is a fun item. But honestly, it's not really my taste. There are two other things in the bag. A little piece of paper that has the quote from the book to remind us of the small velvet bag. And there's nothing in the bag. It's just, oh wait, there is. There's a gold ring with a blue stone in the back. And that is to represent the jewelry from her grandmother. Doesn't really fit me. It's a little bit too big. And I'm not really a fan of how it looks, but I don't think this is supposed to be the main item anyway. It's probably about the back. Next up is a scene between Louise and Yvette. And Louise is another woman who is in this spy network. She lifted out the velvet bed from the jewel box and used a pen knife to slit open the lining just enough to slide her small note through between the lining and the base of the box. Then she sewed up the tear with tiny stitches, fitted the velvet bed back in place and put the pearls on top of that. Here, she rose from the desk and handed Yvette the case of pearls together with the pass she persuaded the German ambassador to endorse. Go safely. The bicycle is at the stables waiting for you. Good luck, Yvette. The corresponding gift is this red velvet box same as in the book and inside is a necklace that is gold and has pearls obviously they are fake and then it says open here and beneath that is a little note and you can use that note to decode messages although the necklace isn't really my taste i still think that this is a good item because it resembles the book and that way you can just imagine yourself being the one that would get this box to do something for the resistance. It would feel so stressful to know that there is something hidden beneath this. Then the final post-it, this is another scene with Gabby and she, and this is a spoiler by the way, she was hiding a friend, but also kind of a lover called Jack. And then the Gestapo entered their building and he had to flee. After a moment, Catherine handed her a wetted up piece of paper. He left this. With clumsy fingers, Gabby smoothed out the torn page of foolscap. A little metal object dropped to the floor, but she ignored it. The message was brief, written hastily. It said, all my love, Jay. Catherine bent to pick something up from the floor and held it out to Gabby. Through a haze of grief, Gabby looked down. A small bird stippled with diamonds, a tiny sapphire for an eye. She closed her hand over it, held it tightly, felt the pin pierce the fleshy parts of her palm. You can probably already guess what it is. This is the corresponding gift. And inside is the same pin. Oh no, one of the stones has already fallen out. Are you kidding me? That sucks. But okay, I wanted to say that this is quite a pretty pin, but apparently not that good of a quality pin. The bird has a blue stone for its eye and then some silver stones, and you can see his beautiful wings. I'm not a person that wears their pins, but I could always put it on a pin banner, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because it's missing a stone, but it does look kind of pretty. Next to the gifts, we also got the quote cards, and this one just says, courage, my dear. And of course, the book club kit with an interview with the author and at the back, a do-it-yourself secret decoder. That looks really interesting. I might try this. And that was everything in the second box. So let's talk final thoughts. Can you guess of which was the worst and which was the best box for me? And this is always very personal. This was definitely the worst box and also the worst book. I could not get through this. I really tried it. It just wasn't it. The writing style was just incredibly boring. That's all I can say. I'm so sorry about that, but it was so boring. And the subject is so interesting. So it's really sad that I couldn't enjoy a book about strong women in the French resistance because that is such a cool concept. And part of it was actually based on true events. So that's even more interesting, but still it didn't, like it didn't do anything for me. I wasn't emotionally attached. I didn't like the characters. I just didn't care. And the gifts were just, uh, I don't know. They were just not my taste. I liked the presentation of the items, but the items themselves were just, mm. So definitely the worst box and book 
of this year. And then the best book and box for me was this one. I was so surprised by this book. I definitely recommend it to everyone. I think I'm gonna give it five stars. It was so refreshing. It was so different from anything I've ever read. And it's a romance sci-fi. And I will definitely be reading the next novel by this author. And also just the box, the presentation of it, the items. You could just see that there was someone that really thought about it and really try to be creative with these gifts and that is why i fell in love with once upon a book club so i do hope we'll get more boxes like this one because this was definitely their best box so far and definitely let me know your opinion do you agree with me or did you just think these boxes were good or great or whatever let me know in the comments and if you have to choose between these boxes which was the better box for you and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then please give it a thumbs up thank you so much for watching and let's stay in touch